Hercules, what are you doing? I'm off to kill the Hydra. With that club? Why don't you use the Hot Sun Hydra? It has three barrels and it would be perfect for that. No, I think I'll stick with this. Suit yourself. He'll be back. Welcome back to another Under Pressure. Today, we are looking at the Hatsan Hydra. Now, the many-headed or multiple-headed Hydra was a monster that Hercules had to kill as one of his 12 labors in penance for a bout of insanity that he had. Now, this, the name Hydra, is a perfect name for this gun because the Hydra, of course, had multiple heads. You cut one off and another one reappeared. That's exactly how this is. We're not cutting anything off, but you can replace the barrel and the upper receiver with just the turn of this screw. And we'll do that in just a moment, show you how easy it is to do. But I can take my, I've got a 22 cal barrel on here right now, I can throw my 25 caliber barrel, my 177 caliber barrel, instantly. I don't have to worry about probes or anything else, it's just plug and play. Now I think a lot of times we get excited about the idea and the capability of being able to change calibers, but we don't uh, do it so much once we've got the gun because of the things that are involved, you know, the tuning, the, uh, the you know, sh switching out probes and so forth like, uh, like that. This is so simple and easy, you can even leave, as you can see here, uh, the scope attached to the gun. Pop it on and you are going to be, you know, ready to go. So this is a gun that has caliber changes that I think you can actually do. And, and will do. So that's really exciting. Now the Hydra is 42.7 inches long. It weighs about 6.8 pounds. So it's you know fairly compact, nice and sleek. You've got Turkish walnut, uh, you know, checkering here on the grip and up here give you and it is you know good checkering. It'll give you a good grip even when the gun's a little bit wet. Uh, you've got an ambidextrous cheek piece here, so you can uh, you know left-handed shooters don't have to feel left out. You've got an adjustable butt pad here, a really a nice butt pad. You can loosen this up, you can get some cast on or cast off, and uh, you know, raise it up and down and so forth. So a lot of adjustment there, you'll be able to get a good cheek weld, uh, no matter how, you, how your build is. Uh, we have the Quattro Trigger. Now out of the box, this one's pretty stiff, we'll test it and see where it's at. But uh, you can adjust, you know, you, the Quattro trigger, especially in their PCPs, is, is a pretty nice trigger. It gives you a lot of adjustability. It's uh, definitely one of the best triggers in this price range. The gun's, you know, in the 400 plus range. And uh, so it's kind of an entry level PCP, but you're getting a lot more um, because of the caliber change, because of the flexibility, you know, with the butt pad, with the trigger, than you do get with a lot of other entry level PCPs. Now, moving up here, you can see we've got a Hot Sun's patented Quiet Energy Shroud here. Uh, if you've shot these before, you know that they make a big difference. It's quite an effective shroud. And, uh, you know, it's got kind of the hair curler style baffles in here with the felt that work really well. And if we go down here, you can see we've got a fill probe. Now, I don't like fill probes in general because I have to keep track of the probe and I'm not very good at that. Now, if you've only got one PCP, it's not a problem because here's the probe, you just screw that into your hose and, and leave it there and you don't have to worry about it. If you have multiple PCPs and you're going to want to be switching them in and out, then you will have to buy, uh, you know, what I recommend is the Air Venturi 1/8 BSPP adapter. I'll put a link in the description below. You know, it's about 10 bucks. You put that on the end of this and then you can just, it's got a quick disconnect, you know, foster fitting on the end, uh, you know, for foster fitting and you just plug that in and, and you're good to go. A lot more convenient that way. I really wish that more manufacturers would start just milling a foster fitting into the base of this. Uh, I think it makes it easier for everybody, but not, not a big deal as long as you get that adapter. So we have here our fill port and it's got this little plug inside. So when you insert the probe, it pops the plug out on the other side. Now the way I've got, gotten to do is I just hold this on this side, you know, so it's in there. When I fill up the gun, I just pop that in and I keep that in my hand, fill it up and then just pop it back out and that way I don't drop it. Otherwise I tend to lose this sort of thing, but that's just me. But a nice touch, this will keep all the dirt and debris and protect your, uh, your fill you know, port there. Now, 
we have Hot Sun's typical uh, dual Picatinny and dovetail rail. I generally recommend using the dovetails with these. It gives you, you know, a more fine adjustment and, and it works really well. And just a few last things here. Got a bolt action, works really well. Cox back, you can lock it back here into place. Uh, right now I have the single shot tray in there, but it also takes a self-indexing magazine. In 177, you've got 14 shots. In 22, you've got 12. And in 25 caliber, you have 10 shots. This is a standard style hot sun magazine where you rotate this. You know, the way to keep track of it is you've got this inner carriage in there and you want to move it around with the cover. If I go the other way, that inner carriage doesn't move, so that's how you know you're going the wrong way. So I move, wind that inner carriage around, that loads that spring. I put a pellet in skirt first, so then it's lined up uh, the right way. And then I can go through and just fill in all these other uh, chambers with pellets and rotate it back to place, pop it on here. Works flawlessly. It's a tried and true design. You don't have to worry about that. Now we have the fill gauge here on the bottom and this is extremely accurate. It, it lines up perfectly with the larger uh, fill gauges on the, on the tanks that we have here. So really pleased about this. You fill this gun up to 200 bar, which is about 2,900 PSI, and uh, you're ready to go. Not regulated, of course, as you would expect. Most uh, guns in this price range are not regulated. In fact, most even up to a, you know $1,000 or more aren't regulated. So that's not to be expected here. Now let me show you how this uh, Hydra system works. Now this just has knurling here, so I can just loosen this up and you know, back that off, and now I make sure first that, uh, that the gun's not cocked. You can see I can decock it just by holding the trigger back. Safety is right here, I didn't mention that earlier. Manual safety, there it's on safe, there it's on fire. Uh, so with the gun uncocked, I can now loosen that up, move that forward, and pop it off. It is really that simple. Now I take the one that I want to pop on now. Again, making sure the bolt's forward. I push this forward, line this up with this hole right here, making sure that I have enough space with this. So make sure that's all the way back. Line that up, it drops right in. And now I'll show you what is locking it in place here. You can see these two sort of lugs right here. You've got one right here and one right here. And they lock in right there and right there. It's lined up left to right that way. Oh, let's see, I'm gonna move that forward. And when you tighten this down, it, it brings these back, locking them extremely tight. I mean, this is not too dissimilar to, you know, systems you find on, on handguns and so forth. So what I like to do then is, is tighten this hand tight and then I take an Allen wrench or something like that and just crank it down and, and just make sure it's absolutely rock solid locked into place. This frame flexes just a tiny bit right here acting kind of like a lock washer. So once you crank this thing down, it stays in place and, uh, and you're rock solid and good to go. And I've been able to take these off and put them back on and get virtually the exact same point of impact, um, you know, without fail. Really, uh, really impressive and an impressively simple system here. Last thing I'll mention is the cylinder is 165 cc, which isn't huge, but it adds to the, to the overall weight and feel and portability of the guns. So, you know, that's the trade-off. You'll get plenty of shots for a, you know, for a hunting situation and, uh, It'll also make it a lot easier to fill up if you're using a hand pump. You won't be pumping so much as if it were twice as large. Well, that's enough talking about this. Let's go to the range. We're going to do accuracy testing. We'll do a chronograph test, sound testing, and so forth, and then we'll come back. We're here at the 35-yard range. We're going to start out with the chronograph testing. Uh, I'm going to give you a full shot string in with the 22 caliber barrel on. We're going to shoot the JSB 18.13s and uh, 
And then as we shoot the accuracy testing, I'm going to give you the, the chronograph readings for each shot, but we're just going to do a full shot string in 22 caliber here. And we're filled up, of course, to uh, 200 bar with, you know, 2900 PSI. Now shooting the JSB heavies, an 18.13 grain pellet, we got a high of 889, a low of 843 for an extreme spread of 46. Now the standard deviation was 15, and our total shots per fill was 24. Now at the average uh, velocity, we get a muzzle energy of about 30 foot-pounds, so nice and peppy in 22 here. And you'll see that uh, on the shot string, we started out fairly high on the curve. So you could actually uh, back it off, tune the hammer down just a little bit, and get a few more shots on, and still have a nice bell curve there. To begin the accuracy testing, I've got the Hot Sun Hydra here in 25 caliber, shooting the JSB Kings, the regular ones, the 25.39s. We're just going to do a five shot group to. Uh, you know, because we've got a lot of shooting to do here so to be able to get through it a little quicker. Now, I haven't tuned up the gun. I have, I've just plopped the barrel on. And uh, the only thing I have done is run some patches through it to clean out, uh, you know, the gunk that the barrels come with. And I uh, always recommend you that whenever you get a, a new gun. So let's go ahead and uh, see how this thing does. And that's five. Up next, we put the 22 cal barrel on here. Again, haven't touched the gun internally. I popped the barrel on and, uh, you know, just took one cider shot dead center. So it was just exactly where I left it. And uh, I want to point out that I'm shooting this Miopta Optica 6, uh, which is the, what is it again? Four and a half to 27. It is a fabulous scope. Uh, really enjoying it. This is a new line of scopes that we're carrying and uh, this will get a review soon. So shooting the JSB heavies, the 18.13 grains, going to do a five shot group again and uh, see how it does. That one, I think, broke left a little bit. And that's five. Last up is the 177 barrel, and we're shooting the Barracuda match in the 4.51 head size. Now, this is 10.65 grain pellet, and I found that hot sun guns often like, uh, you know, that size, the 4.51 or the 5.51 in the Barracuda match. So, it's shooting them pretty fast, but we're going to send five down range and see how it does. Again, I haven't done anything except, uh, you know, clean out the barrel. That one, I think, broke right. And that's five. 
in our narrow enclosed range without any sound deadening whatsoever. The highest reading that, that we got was 86.9 decibels, placing this firmly within the backyard friendly realm. Now let's take a look at our groups here. Starting with the 25 caliber, we were shooting five JSB Kings. These are 25.39 grain pellets at 35 yards. We've got a group that measures 0.28 inches across, so well under submitted of angle. A very, very nice group. You can see it's really easy uh, you know, to cover up with a dime there. Got my faithful, my trusty dime on a stick here. Easily covers the group. In 22 caliber, we were shooting the 18.13 JSB heavies. Again, 0 0.29 inches, center to center. Now, center to center means we take out the diameter of the pellet, and that's what we get here. So again, you know, cover that up really easily with a dime. Excellent, excellent accuracy. Again, well below a uh, minute of angle. Now, the Barracuda Match. With this group, I got five shots in about a half an inch. Uh, when I had done the testing, I was getting smaller groups than this, but this is what it shot, uh, you know, when we did the filming, so that's what you get. Again, a dime will, you know, come pretty close to covering that up, but, uh, you know, we had, you know, one outlier here, otherwise, you know, not a bad little group. Now, oh, you saw the chronograph results. One thing that I didn't talk about introducing the gun is the fact that this gun is tunable. So, while it's designed so you can just plug a barrel in and out and you can do that, you know, without any problem. I mean, you saw we went through all three calibers. We were minute of squirrel accurate in every one of them. Uh, you can tune it uh, to get better results with certain pellets. You can tune it down if you want to shoot, uh, you know, the 177s. If that's kind of your, going to be your principal uh, caliber, you can tune it down. You'll get a longer, flatter shot string and you'll probably get a little bit better accuracy because it's shooting them out pretty fast. You know, the, these... Uh, you know, these heavy Barracuda match pellets were going, you know, over a thousand feet per second. Still pretty accurate for that velocity, so you may want to leave it like that. But make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss our Essentials video that's coming out where we'll show you how to tune your Hydra. Let's go ahead now and do the trigger pull. Five pounds, two ounces. Five pounds, one and a half ounces. Four pounds, 13.5 ounces. Four, an average of five pounds and uh, 0.5 ounces. So this trigger is heavy, you know, heavier than most of you will be used to, uh, heavier than I'm used to, and I think that may have affected my accuracy a little bit, but it's something you get used to, but you don't even have to get used to it because, uh, you know, the quattro trigger is pretty easy to adjust. You can see we've got the adjustment screws here, and you can even access them through the trigger guard, uh, making it a simple process to get the trigger where you want it. Let's wrap this up here. For just over 400 bucks, you're getting quite a bit of air gun here. You've got a shrouded barrel, you've got a quattro trigger. Uh, it was accurate in every caliber that we shot it in. Um, the only thing I did do, I think I mentioned this, you know, at the range, was that I did clean out the barrel. Recommend you do that. That'll clean out a lot of gunk that's in there to keep it from rusting and so forth as it's shipped and processed and whatever. Uh, you'll get pretty good accuracy after that. I mean, really good accuracy. I mean, quarter inch, a little over quarter inch groups. Um, at 35 yards, I mean, that's sub-minute of angle. Uh, I don't think you can ask for much better out of, a, out of an entry-level price point PCP like this one. But you're getting more than that because you can buy the gun in the caliber that you want, and then for just $200, you know, more or less, I think they're about 200 bucks, you can buy another barrel and uh, switch uh, the caliber up like that. So if you wanted to do a 177 for some backyard plinking and then the 25 caliber for some small game and pest hunting, You've got an excellent, uh, an excellent option here. You've got some adjustability in the gun. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, the adjustable trigger, adjustable buttstock, uh, the tunable hammer spring. Uh, you know, quite, a, quite an attractive little gun here, and it looks good, in my opinion. So, now, is there anything I don't like about the gun? Uh, you know, I think the trigger's breaking, you know, probably, you know, two pounds, two or three pounds too heavy out of the box. 
Um, I haven't played with it to get it down, but, uh, but it's a pretty simple procedure there, so don't take that into uh, you know, too much account. Uh, it's, it's, to me, it sounds louder than the 86 or 87 decibel reading that we got in the range, um, but I think it's still probably going to be backyard friendly for most backyards. Other than that, there's a lot to like about this gun, and if you're in the market for an accurate, compact, lightweight little hunting gun or backyard plinker, then this is a great option for you, and you should definitely take a look at it at airgundepot.com. Also, check us out on our other social media platforms, and if you've enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and uh, share it with your friends. And stay tuned for next time. See, I told you you should have used the Hot Sun Hydra. You smell like barbecue. Well, clearly I won. Get me more grapes. <laughs>